Hi, my name's Lindy and welcome to my channel. For those that have been subscribed to me for a number of years, you know the format and you know how I work as a channel. And for those that are new to this channel, welcome. So the title of this video today is called Going Viral Energy Transmission, Going Viral. Now, no coincidence why I chose that title, as you will see as we get into the video. Obviously, probably the majority of people watching this are going to be wondering what on earth is happening on planet Earth right now. And if we track back to earlier videos that I did three or four months ago, before we got to the end of 2019, when I was saying... Uh, 2020 is this goodbye, uh, 2020 the year of finality and making these references and even in the videos that followed after that where I was saying, I basically what I was saying is this shit just got real and things would be very physical and very tangible and in your face and it would be big change and I said the word shocking and it would continue to be shocking and it had only just begun. Um, that is hugely indicative of the energy we're now in. So we are in a much more physical, tangible, in your face, action based, physical change, physical consequences, physical, physical, physical now. And I've been talking about this repeatedly for the last four to five months and even in the last video I did, um, the last few videos I did, if you reference back to them. So the time that we are now in, let's we're going to go into detail here on, on the, the global events that are unfolding um, and changing hour by hour as we speak, that all involve shocking change and restriction to one's freedom, um, really changes forced upon people that is frightening a lot of people. So if I backtrack a little bit, the energy of the time that we're now in, you know, if you're living on planet Earth, unless you're in a remote tribe somewhere, you are going to have heard of this COVID 19 uh, this coronavirus thing that is like throwing a pebble into a pond and rippling out to cause all sorts of changes that governments across the world want to bring in and actually I could say the the beings or people behind the governments want to bring in. So the changes that are taking place in some countries, and if you're in those countries, this would have already happen to you, are just coming about in the United Kingdom now. So the changes that are happening is people being isolated, um, not allowed to come out of their community or out even outside of their houses for a number of days, weeks. Um, in the UK, they're threatening it for up to four months. It hasn't happened yet, but they're threatening it for up to four months for certain groups that um, are health compromised or over the age of 70. Um, and the knock-on effect of these threats to the restriction of freedom, um, and obviously they're stopping flights and all sorts of things, has been um, a mass panic in the stores for medication and for particular goods um, that you can find in the supermarket. And uh, it's quite unbelievable the shockwaves that has caused, but then quite understandable when every hour and every day there are these threats to isolate and cut off communities for a number of weeks, or let's say in, into months for some people they're saying. So why is this happening? There are two timelines for humanity. And because humanity 
chose overwhelmingly to take the path of the heart. So not everybody's on that path yet, but overwhelmingly, once we got above around about 60%, the, the deal was done. So once humanity chose that, we rolled over alongside the Earth, Gaia, planet Earth, into a multi-dimensional quantum grid, which I talked about extensively in one of the last videos I just did. And that grid is here, tangible, real. It's internal, you could say it's external, but it's definitely internal. And we are now starting to live by it. So everything that is not functioning or going to be able to function from that inner grid is falling away and is changing. And I've repeated over and over again that that would mean not just personal changes for us, that's where it starts, but global changes. And in order for global changes to happen, there would be have to be a falling away of many of the old structures and institutions and the way that we have been really railroaded into doing things, um, guided to doing things for a very long time, in, in a way enslaved into doing things for a very long time. So the virus that has been, let's say, released to humanity so I'm going to give you my take on it I mean you'll either resonate with this or you won't my take on it is I feel it isn't a natural virus that it has been entirely orchestrated and made in a lab I feel it's been weaponized and coded in a lab I feel it has been designed to target specific groups of the population to kind of take out some of those populations, especially those that are of a certain age and weaker. And yes, any virus and any illness can do that quite naturally. And probably far more other illnesses and events far would take far more people over to the other side than this virus will. Because the overwhelming majority of people that, that do catch this virus, um, high rates of them recover and are okay. Um, but for those that are older or their immune system is slightly compromised, especially to do with the chest, they're, they're not doing so well and they're not okay. Uh, so I do feel it was made in a lab, weaponized, coded, released, it, released deliberately in order to take out some of the population, but that was only a small part of it because I don't feel it will take out vast waves of population. I don't feel that's the issue here. The panic and the distress in people is less about that and more about the hype of being locked down and rather being pushed into a war-like mentality of being under siege and restricted any movements restricted it's already happening across the world it's already happening here and it's a lot more will come this week so that generates a lot of fear in people and the fear it generates um, aligns with the weaponized coding of that virus and feeds it so although it's completely prudent and sensible Two, like if anyone had a streaming cold that's around you or anyone had a raging flu that was around you or anyone had any kind of thing around you, of course it's completely sensible and reasonable to be taking precautions. And of course if you are in a country that brings emergency laws into power, which is happening here in the United Kingdom as well as other places across the world, then within that law, you will have to obey what that law dictates. And if it means being confined to areas or your own home, then you have to work within that. The virus itself, where it comes 
into play around the area of the chest is very, very interesting because that would very much on an energy level. Okay, you've got the physical where it's kind of decimating airways and chest, especially in people with pre-existing conditions there and others uh, that are more vulnerable and more elderly people. But energy speaking, that area of the body, lungs, shall we say, when I say chest, I'm talking about lungs, not, not the metaphysical heart, lungs. That is an area of the body that very much holds onto and grips onto grief energy. And on this channel, as well as on the solar transmissions album that myself and my younger son did, that's still available, that has transmissions for releasing certain energies, one of the tracks on there, and it has been put up for free, that track on this channel, is why, and it's a grief transmission um, that, act, that tries to release in that area stuff that is buried very deeply and subconsciously. And energy speaking, when there is a lot of energy around the lungs that is congested around the lungs, not just physically, I'm talking about metaphysically, etherically in the energy. That is often around the area of lungs where it is really profound grief. Often that grief has been held on to through the individual person, but that grief is also showing up at this point in our history because we're now looping over into the new grid that's here inside us. It's the whole ancestral grief. It's the whole recorded history of all soul life, all life as essence working through the soul vehicle in form, all human life, recorded history of grief and grieving and loss is all in the area of lungs and chest, you know, lungs, breathing. So although this may be a weaponized, coded, deliberate viral relief release on humanity, a Freudian slip there, it is also a relief and a release of massive grieving energy around the area of the body that hum humanity hold it in, the chest. So what I'm saying is, there is a, an amazing opportunity here because as humans, let's face it, let's face it and be really honest here, we have to be pushed pretty much into everything. We have to really have our arm up behind our back before we really take action on something. We really have to be forced to change and it really comes to that for most humans. It just seems to be human nature. There are exceptions to this, not many. So when there is a programmed threat, uh, a threat that isn't really real or not makes not the difference whether it's a real one and you believe it's a real one or not, the effect is the same. If you are told that, that it is the end of the world and you believe it enough, you make massive life-changing decisions based on that. So this absolutely 150% is not anything to do with the world, the end of the world or Armageddon or anything like that. There is a, there's two sides to this coin. There is the deliberate release of, of something that will take some people over to the other side. I've been saying this for the last so many months that there would be quite a lot of people leave the earth plane. But I don't foresee this being millions and millions of people here. Um, we're talking in the thousands, that's worldwide. That's worldwide, so it's quite a small number. As well as that side of it, really the bigger picture behind that agenda, I feel, 
is to create a state of fear and panic and to really uh, trigger humanity into those states and try and change human behavior almost like the agenda there is to try and force humanity back onto the old grid which no longer supports them the old grid is a survival grid it's a it's a reactionary grid not a creationary grid so it's trying to force the survival instinct to, to really rear its head like a snake in people and collectively to mass panic um, it will it feeds into the fear feeding parts of the virus and uh, to really trigger that kind of thing and if you ask me why as a control mechanism uh, to try and push people onto an old linear um, I'm going to say AI agenda but also uh, when there is that huge release on mass of fear and stress from people that can be fed upon um, by more negative energies shall we say that can be fed upon that's huge feeding ground for that so there's a number of different reasons on that side of it on the inverted side of it there are these reasons now let's go to the amazing positive reasons for this and there there are amazing positive reasons for this which are genuine so i'm not talking about spiritually bypassing or dressing this up here um i totally get that a lot of people are very frightened and very anxious and it is very um tense for a lot of people only a small part of that is a fear of the virus the, the bulk of it is really being almost like taken into warlike conditions where one is told one cannot go out the front door one can't do this or even the threat of that this is what's really triggering a lot of people and actually that's another point lots of people are referencing especially the older generations are referencing this that it reminds them of the war world war ii when they had lived through it and the conditions of rationing which has only just begun really here starting to ration what's on the shelves and what's not um and restriction of movements and uh you know all the rest of it which um there's being threatened um and it's triggering a release of all that energy from there so that's another lot of old energy that's being released through people it's being triggered and it's being released up through the generations why because we can't take that into the ascended quantum multidimensional grid of consciousness that's now active within humanity also this amazing opportunity that we have is that because we are being pushed to make changes and in some ways it's being taken out of our hands for many of us uncomfortably so we are being forced into really facing those dynamics within ourselves that we haven't been facing being honest with ourselves really being true to ourselves really looking at what our priorities are in life really looking closely at the people that we love whether they be members of family whether they be friends whoever they are colleagues whoever they are really looking at this and reassessing everything i mean it's like when somebody has a near-death experience they reassess everything and this isn't a near-death experience but people's reaction when they feel like their livelihood their way of life their finances because of course the knock-on effect is if you can't work or you're not allowed to go out to work or you know your livelihood depended on certain things that suddenly might be stopping for a couple of weeks but they might you know they're threatening it's going to roll on to months over here again it could be all scaremongering or because people don't know but because people are buying into it or believing it or worried that that's a possibility 
you know, the knock-on effect here is it's, it's, it can affect people's livelihood, so their whole way of life, uh, the virus being a tiny part of this, the whole way of life being threatened because of the big world reactions to this. So when people are in those circumstances, like I say, they are pushed into survival mode, the reactionary grid, the linear grid. And it's it can be hard for someone to then sit down and say, where are the positives in this? How can I find the positives in this? Some of the positives are going to be because they get an opportunity, you'll get an opportunity to actually sit quietly with yourself. Now, some of you might already have been doing that for a, a long time, but there'll be many of you watching this that, that haven't, that haven't had the chance to do that, but can really reassess them, them themselves, where their life's going, really reassess who do I really what is it really all about you know uh where my life has been where it's going what am I really appreciative of what am I grateful for what do I well, who what and who do I want to tell that I really care about them and I'm thinking about them who do I want to tell that I I love uh this is a time really to be kind of looking at all those kind of things and really it, it alters one's perception which of course it's supposed to not into the the fear and terror and horror which some people are lapsing into but you've got an opportunity to just reassess and rebalance your life in, in some ways you have no choice and if you're in a country where this is happening and unfolding it's being taken out of your hands and the virus is being used as the weapon to do that, but it is being taken out of your hands. So to take the flip side of this, the positive side of it, not the inverted side of it, is to reassess one's life, really look at what's important to you and what's not, because this is what happens with humans. Unless it gets to that point or we think we're told it's getting to that point, we don't do this. It is taking that time out, and like I say, a lot of it's being enforced upon us, taking that time out to reassess those things, to sit quietly in one's energy, to go into one's heart, metaphysical heart portal, and almost like be reassured that you have a fantastic immune system. This is an amazing thing that human beings have, the most incredible immune system that is working always on your behalf, on our behalf, which is there still working on our behalf. Doesn't matter how compromised those immune systems are living, let's say, in a modern Western world where there are lots of contaminants in food and drink and in the air we breathe, the immune system has continued to, to strive and adapt and can find its way around a lot of things. And like I say, if you have this time on your hands where you're in this enforced lockdown or you're being literally housebound or in, you know, kept in a certain community, you could actually take a few moments every day just to just kind of tune into your immune system and feel how strong and vibrant it is. But also take that time really to sit in your energy there and tune into all the lovely things that have happened in your life, all the lovely things that you are looking forward to in your life or wish to create in your life really being hand over your heart kind of grateful for all those little gems of gold all those amazing moments within your life and kind of tuning into that mentally emotionally spiritually and consciously coming away from the old survival grid which humanity is being yanked back towards and of course uh, a great swathe of humanity are going to just go straight into their heart and not go back towards that. But others that were wavering are, are being yanked back into it because it's, let's say, a shocking worldwide um, scenario that lots of people haven't seen unless they've lived through the war, World War Two. So taking that time to go into that space, reassessing 
it's also a time for all those long seated buried fears to come up and out let's say in a safe way um, and especially grief related things because that's all the area of the lungs it's that part of the body so you can take that opportunity to do that and even taking the opportunity just to be that little bit quieter within yourself is a golden opportunity so sometimes with too many distractions all around us we don't have the opportunity to use our heart portal metaphysical heart portal or go into the heart as easily with less distractions around especially if you're in a position where you are on lockdown or going to be having to stay housebound for a number of weeks on your own or just with one or two family members it's a golden opportunity to do this to keep coming into your energy coming into your space i can tell you now had i not done a period of time completely solo apart from my beautiful beautiful beloved companion my cat binks who tragically very young age six as you know was taken from this world a matter of weeks ago from a very virulent cancer apart from him it was just me and him had i not done a num uh, quite a period of time there completely on my own i would actually even say in isolation and i'm not advocating this because that is not the route isolation to come into the heart is not the route for everybody and you know not the route of choice uh, but I'm talking about from the spiritual sense, not to do with the virus or anything. Had I not done that period of time on my own with introspection, looking within, being in my own energy and reassessing and that change of priorities and perception, I would never have gone fully into the heart. And that's a fact. And as you know, it's an experiential channel. So I only speak about uh things that i've experienced myself personally or gone through with clients uh or let's say have a really strong knowing on within myself but it's all coming from that perspective so there are golden opportunities here and of course this is all about change and we've been talking about change change and change for six years on this channel you cannot go through an evolutionary step internally without it showing up externally. And because there has been a massive step taken by humanity into a massive grid, a multidimensional quantum zero point unified grid, which is now activated internally, we moved in alignment with the earth, we're all on board together. It is 100% going to show up everywhere. Governments, finances, changes in life, changes in one live, how one lives one's life. Do I think this is a permanent forever change and things won't go back as they were before? No, I don't. This is not that kind of scenario. It is a jolt and people are, it's going to jolt people like, um, like electrodes on the heart. It's going to jolt people into going more into the heart or it's going to jolt them into looping more into a reactionary survival grid, not temporarily, but kind of permanently. So anyone can yo-yo a little bit for a while. I'm talking permanently. Do I think that there'll be worldwide global changes that won't try and lapse back as they were before? No, I don't. Uh, I think this is one big, big, it's a big one, big stepping stone to the global changes that are going on. I don't feel it is the major stepping stone that this is it, um, but it is a big one and it is all about the things that I'm talking about. And it's a question of being practical logical but at the same time not going into a state of absolute horror terror or panic trying to get things in proportion and using the enforced time that you've been given 
to let the stuff come up for you that needs to come up in a safe and comfortable way and in a safe and comfortable environment. Also processing that stuff, getting help with that as needed. Also, like I say, reassessing yourself, reassessing really what is most important, you know, most important thing being, you know, that love, that compassion, that kindness, not just to yourself, not just to your immediate family, but to others, you know, making that choice continuously to go into the heart on this. So this is a, a golden global opportunity to do this. It's It makes me smile because the malevolent intent behind this coded weaponized virus was not for that purpose. But ironically, because over 60% of humanity have made the choice on a soul and spiritual level to go into the heart, the ultimate outcome of this will be so much shifting and breaking down of the old within people, but also externally, and will actually help that endeavor for people to go into the heart. It's actually pushing them forward into that. So the, the flip side of it is a crumbling of the old to come into the, to the new. So I'm just feeling into, is there anything else I need to say? I mean, obviously, like I say, there is a lot of grief-like energy in that area of the body. So collectively and ancestrally, there's a big relief, a release of grief energies. There was a big release of anger energies when the whole Me Too thing and the whole females speaking up for generations of being wronged, there was a big anger release thing that was went on for a number of months. Now this is a big massive grief release energy going on now globally uh, uh, alongside this. So there are, there are positives coming out of that. Also what I will say is on that old grid, the reactionary grid, the inverted agenda there was that we really were guided into a war, really a third world war, which would have happened by now had we pulled away internally from that reality. Had we not done that, that would have happened. Uh, had, ironically, different political players been in charge in the world, that would have happened by now. So this is all great news. What this virus is, is another attempt at evoking on the inverted side of it, that state of war like under siege fear that they wanted to happen with the Third World War that they've been pulling towards for a while. So really, like I say, take one day at a time Try not to go into blind fear and panic. I really don't feel this is a turning point for humanity. It's um, a shocking point for a lot of people. But then of, often those soul shocks and those big shocks are what actually create change and, you know, elevate a process. And... I'm sure there are challenges in it. There are challenges in it for all of us. But it's a question of really, like I say, going into the heart, really keeping your cool, keeping your head. It's all going to be okay. Um, you know, I could say to you, if you have uh, relatives that you're worried about, or even relatives that have the virus, remember that a lot of people that have caught it, and it, worldwide it's still small numbers at the moment, have made recoveries from it very, very quickly. And others are shocked at how mild it is, but with others it takes a different form. And I could say to you, if one of your relatives, it, it took that more um, serious, shall we say, form where they were to pass over. 
I know how devastating that is from a human perspective. I absolutely know it. Not to have that person uh, with you, alongside you. From a consciousness perspective, what happens is when someone passes over is their consciousness changes form. They expand and they are still existing, but actually in a, not constricted within a human vessel by them, but hugely expanded. So in other words, what I'm confirming again is they go on, they infinitely go on, they don't cease to exist, but they do cease to be in front of you in the form that you knew them as. And of course, what does that release within you? but another load of grief, which is lung energy and grief-related energy again. So try not to panic, try to keep your cool, try to keep in balance, witness what is coming through you, deal, what's coming, deal with what's coming through you, try to be kind to yourself and loving to yourself and those that you care about and love and your family and your friends try and be kind to others like complete strangers or neighbors if you don't know them at these times it gives you an opportunity to do that it gives you an opportunity to slow down to think to self to self reflect introspection all of those kinds of things and it gives you an opportunity to really look at all the things that you take for granted, that we all take for granted, and to have that gratitude and absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is one of those moments where there is an influx of change, release and new, release and new. It is not Armageddon. It is not the end of the world. It is not any of those things. It's just something that we're moving through we'll move through it, it might take a matter of weeks, it might run into months, it might be slightly longer, depending, not really, I feel, on the virus, but on, on the opportunities that one's culture, society and governments are using this virus for, what opportunities they're using there, that's the inverted side of it. The other side of it is you use the opportunity you're given, this golden opportunity to make these changes. There are far too many swathes of humanity fully within their hearts at this time that are, once one gets in the heart, one raises in the rungs of consciousness like a ladder in the heart. There are too many that have made that soul and essence decision and physical decision it's physically happening for them for that to be reversed at this point in history. So that's all good and that's all part of what's going on. There's the pull away from the old into the new and the virus really is trying to, to stop people making that change into the heart. Stop more jumping on board but it's, it's kind of too late for that. It's kind of too late for that now. Too many people have gone into the heart. Too many people are going to be ascending in the human body. It's gone too far to be stopped. Too many people have chosen to turn into love, into the heart. Turn into love and not away from it. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it comforting. I am sending you so much love. Look after yourselves. Look after those that you love. And look after, you know, other people that maybe reach out uh, for some support in some kind of way. Let's look after each other here. That's part of the creationary grid that we're on. That compassion and love isn't limited. It's limitless. So let's make the most of this scenario that we are now in let's go the right direction on this direction that if you're watching this channel most of you have been going in because you wouldn't have even been drawn to this channel you wouldn't have been even drawn to going into the heart you wouldn't have been drawn into expanding your consciousness so continue going onward upward and inward 
from my heart to yours, I'm going to love you and leave you. Take care wherever you are in the world. You may be a country that this hasn't affected yet, or you may be one that's right in the middle of a lockdown. In the United Kingdom here, things are changing by the hour. Like I say, lots of things in the pipeline, but we're all on board. We're all looking after each other. One step at a time, it's going to be okay. It's just one of them solid, tangible, shocking changes that I was talking about a few months ago. Look after yourselves. I'll be back on camera soon. I'm going to record a video for my patrons uh, straight after this, which will be a meditation really designed to boost one's immune system and really keep going into the heart at despite the chaos that, that is around people. Be the eye of the storm, don't be the storm itself. Love you guys, look after yourselves, see you soon, bye.